Welcome back, Explorer. We hope you have your sea legs, because on today's episode of Backrooms Explained, we're taking to the open oceans, or at least the Backrooms equivalent for level 17. Now, now, don't panic. We're not dropping you back into the briny depths of level 7 to contend with Tiny and the giant beast below. That'd just be inhumane, and who could accuse us of that? Instead, you're going to be the newest resident of the backroom's largest naval vessel, the Carrier. We hope you find it hospitable. Having thankfully no clipped out of the forever altering environment of level 16 before you were frozen, burned, melted with lava, and dehydrated in a desert in the same unpleasant afternoon, you find yourself wandering another old favorite, a tight metal hallway. You can hear pipes gurgling and steel creaking all around you. Distantly, you can hear the ocean lapping at the sides of the ship, a mighty aircraft carrier in the literal middle of nowhere. However, you're still feeling hopeful. You'll take a seemingly abandoned naval asset over the harsh environment of an endless open landscape any day. After all, in the confines of the ship, you might be able to get your hands on some MREs, meet some fellow backrooms wanderers, or maybe even get access to some new supplies and weapons. After all, these last few backrooms levels really haven't been too kind on your attempts to gather supplies. Nobody said this experience would be a picnic explorer. But you keep on walking down the narrow corridors of the carrier's lower levels, cringing at every pronounced clank your footsteps seem to make. You've learned on so many levels now what a terrible idea it is to draw attention to yourself in the back rooms. As the old saying goes, when the fox hears a rabbit scream, he comes running, but not to help. You make turns, twisting your way through various reinforced doors and bulkheads. The inside of the carrier seems to have the same labyrinthine internals as so many other levels. However, What's particularly frustrating about a backroom's labyrinth is the fact that they are under no obligation to be fair or make sense. Things become a lot less predictable when you're required to lose your more conventional sense of reality. In the backrooms, truly anything can happen. But that's not always a bad thing. You know this firsthand, because soon enough, you come upon what appears to be an armory hidden behind yet another reinforced door. You twist the valve until you hear the satisfying pop of the door's locks disengaging and the scrape of its hinges sliding open. On the inside, you see a truly glorious sight. Racks upon racks of weapons and ballistic vests. As you step inside, you feel like Neo in that one scene from the first Matrix movie. You're truly spoiled for choice, but you decide you'll keep it simple. You grab a handgun, a ballistic vest, and what you assume is a pump-action shotgun. You decide not to mess around with the grenades. You know your own luck. You'll probably just fumble it and blow yourself to smithereens, you clumsy hairless ape. With your newfound armaments, you decide to set off once again and see what you can find. Level 17 has been kind to you so far. A little seasickness here and there aside. So perhaps there are more goodies waiting for you. Who knows, this might even be one of those rare chill levels you sometimes find, which always feel like a wonderful treat. These are the nice, cozy thoughts passing through your mind when you suddenly get shot in the back. But hey, you're not entirely unlucky. The shot seems to have come from quite a distance away, and thanks to the ballistic vest you had the foresight to purloin. It really only feels like someone whacking a baseball bat into your back with tremendous force, cracking a couple of ribs and laying you out against the cold metal ground. That's when you hear the voices behind you. One of them says, Why the hell did you shoot him, Jonesy? The other, quivering in a way that betrays a kind of strained paranoia and panic, says, He was an imprint. I just know it. He gave me the feeling. Imprints. That's a new one. You think to yourself, as you desperately try to summon the strength to stand, despite the sudden and immense pain in your back, you can hear a pair of footsteps getting closer and hope that whoever these two are, they're not fans of implementing the classic double tap. 
That's when you hear the telltale click of a gun being loaded, and a sudden rush of adrenaline springs you back up to your feet, as though you've just been given an electric shock. You turn and see the two people coming down a hallway adjacent to your own, both shocked strangers, wielding rifles. As the two instinctively shoulder their weapons, assuming that you are indeed whatever an imprint is, you leap out of the way, darting down the hallway out of view. The two strangers waste no time in opening fire. The reports of their rifles are deafening in these tight metal hallways, as are the loud ting-ting-tings of their bullets ricocheting off the walls. You need to get out of here before this pair of paranoid weirdos turns you into ballistic Swiss cheese. You make a sudden turn through a door at the end of the hall, and find yourself staring up the shaft of a large metal stairway. It's too late to turn back now. You can hear the distant footsteps of the duo getting closer. All you can do now is start running up the stairs and hope they don't find you. We just have one question. Are you feeling lucky, explorer? Well, are you? Sorry, we won't load the question, but your two new friends are loading their rifles. So you start sprinting up the stairs as quickly as possible. By the time you're halfway up, the two strangers enter the stairwell below you and begin opening fire, sending a volley of bullets up through the stairs below you. Thankfully, these two are no marksmen, so none of the shots make contact, though some, you may readily admit, get far too close for comfort. You just do what you do best, explorer. Keep running. Part of you wishes you could just stop and reason with the people chasing you, but you get the sense you're probably past that now. They truly believe you're an imprint, whatever that means. And to be an imprint appears to be a capital offense. Of course, you have the handgun and the shotgun that you picked up. But even in a life or death situation, the idea of turning those weapons against actual people sickens you. You've fought off and even killed entities in the back rooms before. But do you really have it in you to take a human life, even if it means saving your own? But you can't spend too long contemplating ethics, because those two strangers are running up the stairs again. The best you can do is keep moving, and make sure you remain out of their iron sights. So you keep running, darting from hall to hall at random, passing through different doors in hopes of making sure that they lose your scent. This plan ends up paying off, because after a few minutes of frantic evasive tactics, you can no longer hear their footsteps. It seems like you've lost them. Well done, explorer. You take a moment to sit down and breathe heavily as the adrenaline wears off. You feel that dull, throbbing ache in your back again, where the bullet struck your ballistic vest. You're furious at every movie you've ever watched that showed some action hero or super cop shrugging off gunshots with the help of a handy bulletproof vest like it was nothing. In reality, it hurt like hell. Though at least you're still alive, for now. Perhaps some almond water will help ease the pain, if you can find any out here. When you've regained some energy, you rise to your feet again and continue walking down the desolate halls of the carrier. You haven't seen any rooms in a while. No barracks, no engine or maintenance rooms, no supply rooms, not even another armory, just more of those winding, bleak hallways. Occasionally, you come upon some hallways that look flooded with busted rivets in the wall letting jets of water spew out of the metal underneath, leaving a shimmering pool on the ground. Your time in the back rooms has taught you that, oftentimes, hideous beasts lurk in the waters. So you make the wise decision to stay away from any hallways that look like they might lead you further into the depths. Really, you're a landlubber at heart, and you're not afraid to admit it. Naturally, when you pass into a new hallway and see a human-shaped figure standing in the far end, you're immediately on guard. You don't intend to make the mistake of your attackers and adopt a shoot-first, ask-questions-later mentality. Instead, you shoulder your shotgun and carefully approach. You even call out, Hey, I don't want any trouble. I'm human, just like you. I just want to talk. You wish you'd been treated with the same courtesy. But, as you get closer, you get the vague sense that something is wrong. For starters, isn't it peculiar that this stranger hasn't reacted yet? The back rooms trains you to be cautious and jumpy, 
especially if something new suddenly approaches you from behind. Could this be a faceling that's wandered into level 17? No, a faceling still would have reacted to your voice. And how come you're the one with the two guns and the ballistic vest, but you're also the one feeling nervous this time? It doesn't make sense. Then, the stranger turns, and your body is suddenly awash in icy dread. This isn't a human. They look almost like one, but you know, deep down in your bones, that this entity is the furthest thing from human. You feel like you're surrounded by long, clawed hands, piercing your skin with their fingernails. You're wise enough to follow your intuition and avoid looking at the entity's face. Little did you know, if you'd made eye contact, it probably would have spelled death for you. We suppose you're not that unlucky after all. This almost human entity is an imprint. The same creature those two gun-toting, trigger-happy strangers thought you were earlier. And who could blame them for being cautious? Well, you could, considering they almost killed you. But it's understandable that an encounter with an imprint, and their inherent dread-inducing properties, would leave a person a little shaky. They were lucky that, like you, they didn't look directly into the eyes of one of these creatures. If that happens and you're fortunate, you'll be rendered unconscious for several hours. If you're less fortunate, gazing into the eyes of an imprint is a one-way ticket to instant brain death. Imprints, as far as we're aware, are flawed copies of people who previously wandered level 17. We don't know what exactly causes them to exist, but we do know it's best to avoid them at all costs. So you make the sensible decision and hightail it in the other direction until those feelings of unease wear off. It really is just your luck that you'd encounter your two gun-loving friends in the hall, isn't it, Explorer? Of course, wanting to find a diplomatic solution to this whole mess, you try your best to explain that you're not an imprint. But one of the two terrified gunmen simply replies, that's exactly what an imprint would say, and the chase promptly begins. Now, though, at the end of your tether, you're seriously considering just shooting these guys and being done with it. But that isn't what you do. Instead, you keep running. From hallway to hallway. From stairwell to stairwell. Always going up and knowing those two paranoid maniacs are hot on your heels. You keep running until you find yourself in a decidedly different room. Some kind of viewing deck with large windows leading to the outside, each one letting in these strange, shimmering shafts of light. Something about it reminds you of the light that came out of the eyes of the neighborhood watch. Light that was deadly to the touch. Still hearing the footsteps coming towards you, you run across the room, making sure to duck below the light. Your pursuers, however, have no such tact. They run into the room, thirsty for your blood, Guns locked and loaded, but the second their bodies pass into the light, everything changes. Their bodies are rooted in place as they begin to violently spasm, choking on seemingly nothing, until water gushes out between their lips. They flail powerlessly for a few minutes while you watch in horror, before collapsing onto the ground, water dripping from their mouths and forming a puddle beneath them. The light, it seems, makes people drown just by touching them. You exhale, a little traumatized by what you've just seen, and think to yourself, God, I need to get off this stupid ship. Want to stay tuned for the next exciting exploration into the back rooms? As we delve deeper and deeper into this liminal abyss, be sure to subscribe to The Back Rooms Explained and turn on notifications so you never miss another expedition. Now go check out level 18, Memories, for more exercises into Backrooms Terror.